mixed in some cobalt and some white and I'm going to start at the top on a really dark layer of the sky. Some white into my blue mixture. I'm just going to come down in the sky so we get lighter and lighter as we come towards the mountain layer. Continuing to add some white. Blending the colors back up and back down. I'm just going to decided to put some little herringbone clouds in the sky just to give it a bit more rather than a plain sky. But you can experiment with this and do whatever you like. I'm just going in while it's still a little bit damp in the original blend. Now I'll just put a few more highlights into the clouds and then basically leave it to dry before I start on the layer of mountains. So just making a really light fluffy sky. If you um, have a look here, I've combined two photographs and brought um, the sky from a different photograph into this photograph because I thought it would just add a, a different touch to the painting to give it a bit more interesting sky. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an outline of the mountains onto the blue here just so that I have a vague idea of where we're going to paint. So just going in and getting an outline that we can use. Okay, I've got four colors. I've got cobalt, titanium, diazonine purple, and quin burnt orange. And I've mixed them together to find a nice purpley color, which I'm just going to put on fairly um, easily on the edges here and just bring it down a bit because the trees are going to go over it and um, you just do the outline of the mountain. At this stage I'm not worrying about where the snow patches are, we'll come back to that later. I'm going to vary the colour slightly in the lower parts just to, to show where there might have been some bits of rock that are subtly in the light. So nothing too serious, just some brush strokes here. just to give some depth to the mountains. So the next step in this process is I'm looking at the snow features on the mountains and I'm just drawing them in fairly um, loosely and then with the chalk pencil just on top of everything here and I will then paint them when I have them in. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint in the, the bits of shadowed snow, the ones that are all in the shadow. And in fact, I think I need more blue, a little bit too pale.
If you think you've got the wrong colour or anything, you can, you can just go back in later and just go over the top. It's not a problem. Just have a look at this, how it's progressing. So sometimes it's nice to just leave some little tiny gaps so it shows that the, the rocks may be sticking out in the face between the snow. And I always tend to paint from the right to the left, I'm oh, sorry, from the left to the right because I am right handed. So obviously do the opposite if you are left handed. I'm just getting to the end now of painting in the little snow bits. What I haven't painted in yet is the highlight where the snow is in the sun. And I'll just wait until this, the dark snow is dried and then I'll put the white highlights on the top. So I've finished with all the dark snow and the snow is dry so right now I'm just going to add some little highlights of where the sun is just catching some pieces of this the snow and highlighting it through here. It's going down this way a little bit. And there's a few bits over here. In fact, there wasn't much, and then I'll get down here. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Come up a bit there, a little bit more, even though it wasn't quite that big. Should do it. So these are the colors that I'm going to use in the next phase of the painting. What I'm going to do is to block in the foreground and the trees, but I'm not going to do the trees in the sky. I'm merely going to start with the earth in the front here. So right now in the palette, I have the Quinn Burnt Orange and the Quinn Nickel Azo Gold and the Thalo Blue. If you mix the two together, the Thalo Blue and the Quinn Burnt Orange, you're going to get a wonderful deep green. But for now, I'm just going to put in some, some nice red tones into the foreground and we'll go over this in a while so don't panic it looks pretty bold but it's, it's going to be settling down i just like to have bits of orange poking through in various places Mix now the thalo blue and the quinburnt orange we've got some darker pieces and if you look at the photograph there's some really nice dark bits in here so we'll just mix and match it in here and I'll, I'll come back in later with more so now in my palette I've added some yellow ochre some green gold and some cad yellow dark I'm going to continue to use the quin burnt orange and the thalo blue green shade and use all those colors to bring a few more highlights into our foreground. So let's just start with some of this green gold, a bit of that. Actually, I'm going to add some white because white with the green gold brings up a lovely lovely green colour. Let me just mix those for you and you can see what what we get. And this colour happens in our forests and hills all the time. If you're out there you can check that out. So I'm just going to start adding some bits of colour in here. Back and forth with the brush, leaving some orange, adding some of the darker colours.
So I'm just going to come back in and put some darker spots in to give the greenery some depth and break up the lines. And I'm just about finished putting in the, the foreground now. Now the next step will be to work out where the trees are going to go and to do some work on there. Before I go any further, I've just got a rock that's in the picture here. So I'm just going to go back onto my original palette and with some of the blue I'm going to add some burnt sienna. Just make a nice grey. And then I'm just going to put in the basic shape of the rock here. And then we'll come back and do some more to it in a little while. Just block it in. And that's good. And for the next project I'm going to do, and I have done a little bit of it already, if you can see here, I've started to block in where my two trees on the left hand side of the painting are going to go. So once the rock is dry, I'll start blocking in those trees. I'll probably do some of these little trees here as well. Okay. Yeah. So I've added to the palette a little bit of ultramarine blue and I'm going to use it with my Quin Burnt Orange to make a really nice dark deep brown. And this I'm going to use for the base tree trunks. Then we'll add more light in again afterwards. But this is the, the first part of it. So um, starting, and this is always tricky. I mean, it's really hard to get this right. But just work your way down. The tree has got a nice little awkward bend in it. So somehow. Just come on down. We'll add more highlights to this after we've um, after it's all dry. But basically, I'm just trying to get the shape and where the trunks of the trees will be. And then I just want to introduce you to another little thing here. This is called my rigger brush, I think, or dagger brush. It has this fabulous, fabulous point on the end, and it's fantastic for doing tree branches. So I'm just going to load it up with some paint here. And then just take it and let it come out. And it just makes the most beautiful shape of branches. We'll do another one just as a demonstration. And from here. At this point, I'm probably going to cover up some of these branches with some leaves. I mean we will do that but I'll come back in afterwards with the same little brush and just add the branch details again, the ones that I need to show out. While I'm letting the tree branches dry here I'm just going to fill in some of these smaller trees that are growing out behind so they'll come over the dark areas that I have here. So we'll start with some gold green, a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of that, and a little bit of the blue. Okay, let's see if that's going to be light enough. So we'll just work our way through here. And I'll probably add more highlights to these trees. And 
but I might add highlights right away. So I've put in a few of the little bushes, bushy trees along the bottom here. Now I'm just working on the tree here and there's a lot of dark just below this tree that's in shadow. So we'll add a bit of shadow in here, going all the way up to the tree trunk. That's it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some dark leaves onto the trees and we'll come back in later and put some highlights. So I've got a really nice dark green color here. I'll just use my trusty square end brushes. And I'll start somewhere up near the top, just looking at what I have here. And just put in some shapes. Later we'll probably come back in and put some more sky holes in. But um, you can leave sky holes too while you're doing this. So you'll notice that I haven't painted in the branches exactly as they are. I kind of like the top of this mountain showing through and in the picture here the branch goes right the way through it and I just thought it would be much prettier if you left it out. And just don't ever feel that you have to paint exactly what's there. Move trees, do whatever you like, but um, make the composition good. So now I'm just coming up to the final dark layer of um, the leaves here and then after that I'll let it dry and we'll put some highlights onto it. So now I'm going to add some highlights into the trees. I've used my green gold, a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow ochre. And just see how that goes. If you look at your photograph you'll see that you've, you've got the highlights are sitting on the top branches of the trees. This will just give the, them a little bit of depth. Just darken that up a little bit. We're just making some interesting shapes in the areas that are catching the sun. Just make sure you don't make all the shapes exactly the same. Just go for interesting patterns and shapes that will make the painting more interesting. Here I've brought the branches across the trunk of the tree. So at this point I'm just going to go back in and put some fiddly little twigs and things hanging out here, just to give my tree a bit more depth. So I'm just going to figure out where this last tree is going to go. 
I'll start by just marking approximately the trunk and then we'll work on putting some foliage on this tree. Okay, starting at the top, putting in a few odd leaves here and there. Starting again with the dark, we can add some highlights later. One thing to remember about trees is that you don't want them to be symmetrical on both sides. So you, when you have a branch coming out one side, it um, doesn't necessarily have to be an equal branch on the other side. If you look at the photograph, you'll see that pretty clearly. Now I'm just going to put some shadows onto the rock and a, a couple of cracks in the rock. So you'd see there was shadows across this rock here, from thrown by the trees. And kind of come down here, another bit here, and then there are some dips in this rock, so there are a few more darker bits in the rock. And then I'm just going to put a little highlight along the rock edge just to bring it out a bit and maybe just a bit where the sun could have got through the trees and finally on this rock and then finally on the rock I'm just going to put in some cracks that you often find in a rock with my trusty rigger brush here and that's it And then I'm just going to work down the bark of the tree here, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Put some highlights onto the trunks. It's because they look rather flat at the moment and nearly always you'll see lighter sections in a tree bark. So from my very messy original palette here, I'm going to pick up the colour of the sky and then I've changed my brush, now I've got a round brush and really this is one of the only occasions I use a round brush. But if you just come back into the sky here and you just use the brush to just put some little holes in the, the leaves. They call, they call them sky holes, that one's a little bit dark. It gives the branches this pointy edges, which look really sweet. So what's left on the painting now is to decide what to do with the trees on the left hand side. I just think it would be too much to have two dark black trees in here. So I'm going to put in the smaller of the two trees and then some smaller trees that are just growing down the slope of it, just vaguely penciling them in with the chalk pencil and some bushes along the edge. So I'm, I'm going to just put in where I think the trunk of this tree is going to be. For the dark green of the tree, I'm using Quinn Burnt Orange, 
and cream and phthalo blue green shade. It will just give me the background color of the trees. It looks really dark, but in fact it is just a dark greeny color. And get the most of the paint there. And then we'll just block in some of the shapes of this tree. And I can work on them later with some highlights. I go on and do highlights into the tree. I'm just going to block in some of the, the back trees here just to see how they all fit together. And these trees are the ones that are kind of dropping off the ridge here. So they, they'll be growing down behind the ridge and you'll just be seeing the tops of them. So just working out shapes more than anything. I'm just going to block in this final tree here. I might not make it quite as dense it is, as it is, but we'll see how we go. So it seems to have been broken off in a windstorm up at the top here, so we'll just paint it as it is for now. Just to get the approximate area of the trunk. Notice how it's not vertical, it's slightly leaning into the painting. And that's something to, I just want to point out that often it's much better not to have tree trunks the same size. In this photograph you can see these two are very much the same size, but I've tried to alter it slightly so one is slightly thicker than the other one. Just uh, preference. To add some branches onto this trunk before I actually start putting in the foliage. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put in these dark areas of the tree. And remembering we'll come back in afterwards and put on some of the highlights. So we'll just block in these areas. sunlight catching the upward facing surfaces of the trees. And just make sure you're varying your shapes just to give some interest. So I finished putting the highlights on all the trees here. I am um, thinking I'm just going to add a few more lighter bits into the bark of the trees just to give them a little bit more depth. And um, finally, just having had a look at it, I think I'm, I'm going to add one more light snow patch, otherwise it's too... The, they're too concentrated in the middle and the sun could easily be catching this snow patch out here. And then I think that's a wrap.